I must just mention this audio pen I hired. You just press the button on there, put it on a number on the map, listen, and it tells you all about it. Behind me is the Astoria Hotel, and this is where Adolf Hitler planned to have his victory party, but he never won. It's one of the most expensive hotels in Russia. St. Isaac's Cathedral. It's a Russian Orthodox church. It was built by the French-Swiss architect Montferrand. It took him 40 years to build, and this was because it was prophesied that as soon as it was finished, he would die. And indeed, he did die very soon after the cathedral was finished. He wanted to be buried there, but because it was Orthodox and he was Catholic, he wasn't allowed, and so he was buried in France. It's worth checking your timings because St Isaac's Church doesn't open till 10.30 and if your tour gets here at 9.30, you won't be allowed inside. This is a monument to Nicholas I. It was a technical wonder of the time because the horse is being held up by only two support points. Nicholas is surrounded by four female figures. They were said to be his four virtues, but they also resemble his wife and his three daughters, so it could be regarded as a family statue. The Marinsky Palace, which belonged to Princess Maria, who was daughter of Nicholas I, is right next to the canal, and you can take a wonderful boat trip along the canal. The manager of St. Petersburg is an exhibition hall. It's the largest one in St. Petersburg. This is the Senate and Synod building. Behind me is the Eternal Flame, which is a monument to two of the Russian revolutions. All this land was owned by Sweden, cutting Russia off from the Baltic Sea and starving them of economic growth. After 21 years of war, Peter eventually broke through to the Baltic Sea. He defeated the Swedes. By 1903, Peter the Great had taken all this land back from Sweden, and that's why it's called St. Petersburg. We're in the Summer Garden. In 1914, the Russian people thought that the name St. Petersburg wasn't very Russian so they changed the name to Petrograd. This is the first garden of St. Petersburg and it was based on Versailles. There's a huge French influence. The fountains were brought over from England and these statues have a strong Italian influence. In 1924, the Soviet Union changed the name to Leningrad. This is the residence of the only legitimate son of Catherine the Great. Catherine was a German princess who married Peter the Great's grandson and that was the residence of her only legitimate heir, although she had four children, he was the only legitimate heir. This is the Russian Museum, formerly the Mikalsky Palace. It belonged to several members of the royal family and when they left they took every stick of furniture, every door with them. The Russian Museum is now home to the largest art collection in Russia. They moved all the works of art over from the Hermitage. This is the famous Church of the Spilled Blood. We're in Our Saviour of the Spilled Blood. It's one of the most beautiful churches in St. Petersburg. It's built on the spot where Alexander II was mortally wounded and spilt his blood, so that's how it got its name. Everything in here is mosaic. There's no paintings. Everything on the outside and the inside it's done on my sake. The third stop on the St. Petersburg Explorer Tour is outside the Alexandrinsky Theatre but across the road from that is this amazing pink building, which is actually a bank. The theatre has been part of UNESCO heritage since 1843. Outside the theatre is the park, which leads us to the monument of Catherine the Great. 
This is the statue of Catherine the Great, and you can see she's sitting on a bell. And in Russia, the bell symbolized a coup d'etat, and that's the way that Catherine came to power. And she's surrounded by all her favorite associates that helped her. We're now walking towards the main shopping street. It's called the Nevsky Project, and it's 4.5 meters long. We're now walking to... <laughs> Sorry, just a minute. Okay. We're now walking towards the main shopping street, which is the Nevsky Project, and it's 4.6 kilometers long, and some of the shops are very ornate. This is the Anishkloff Palace. It was built by the Empress Elizabeth as a gift for her husband. If you're hungry or thirsty, there are plenty of cafes along the Nevsky project, and most take credit card. This is Palace Square. It's the largest square in St. Petersburg. It's twice as large as the Red Square in Moscow. It's five hectares, big enough for five battalions to march on. And there's a festival going on here at the moment. This is the Winter Palace of St. Catherine. St. Catherine was a great art collector and she wanted to find a place to store her art to show her friends, but it grew and grew. And now this is one of the five buildings of the Hermitage that stores the art. With over three million exhibits, they're continually opening new buildings. The Alexander Column was constructed to commemorate the victory over Napoleon and it was constructed with the angel at the top having the face of Alexander I. The Hermitage says it's closed on Mondays but then so does the Church of the Spilled Blood and that was open. But Mondays does seem to be a, a, a dodgy day for visiting. I guess some women collect handbags. Catherine the Great collected art and she had to have a place to store it, the Hermitage. All over St. Petersburg, there are places where you can stand behind a suit of armor and pretend it's you. There's one. Just a word of warning, the Chocolate Museum is not a museum, it's a shop. But it smells delicious. This is the Kazan Cathedral. Throughout the ages there have always been military churches on this site. This one is dedicated to Our Lady of Kazan, probably the most venerated icon in Russian history. Opposite to Kazan Cathedral is Café Singer. It's a cafe in a bookstore and it's very charming inside, similar to the one we went to in Budapest in Hungary. The House of Books was built by the Singer Sewing Machine Company in 1904. It's Art Nouveau. It was originally meant to look like an American skyscraper, but because of the Russian rules of construction, no building is allowed to exceed 77 feet. So it was enlarged with the help of a dome on the top, and on the top of that is a glass globe. Another way to travel around St. Petersburg is in a fairy tale coach. The statue is also known as the Bronze Horseman and he's pointing in the direction of the Peter and Paul Fortress. You can buy a combined ticket here in the boathouse. It's not expensive, but you do need two to three hours. And this takes you around the cathedral, 
the Commandant's House, the Museum of Rocket and Space Technology, the prison, and there's a history of the fortress. You can visit the Museum of Medieval Torture Instruments if you're brave. This complex is a visit in itself. 